एक Good evening. <coughs> it's uh, Friday evening, about uh, half past nine at night. The sun's just starting to go down, and as you can see, we've moved positions. After three nights of fishing in the other spot, with a, with a good start, you know, with a couple of nice, nice carp, it just went dead. The carp moved, a few carp that were in that bay moved out and uh, all we caught was uh, bream and tench. Uh, the other spots just didn't produce, I haven't heard anything, nothing. Um, just, it just didn't seem right. And with the wind picking up today, it just seemed like it was uh, the right thing to do, to come down, at least explore the tail end of this middle arm on the lake. Um, so we, but about one o'clock today, we decided to have a little tour, as you probably saw earlier on in one of the videos. Uh, we come all the way down the arm and we got down to near the bottom of the arm and we saw quite a few fish. Uh, a few, few nicer ones, certainly over 20 pounds anyway. And it just looked good, good down here. The water was coloured up. Everywhere we went we saw fish, you know, bream and that darting around and, and carp. You know, it, it just looked right for it. Water temperature still warming up. Um, my theory is the carp still want quite shallow water, and uh, if you can find, um, you know, the shallow bays, um, I, th I think it's good. So we've, we've had a good, I've had a good scan around out here, and um, it's, it's a lovely, lovely depth of water out here. It's, it's only about sort of 12. 13 feet all the way across and the margins are really nice as well where you've got four five six feet right in the snags as well so yeah it looks really good um, I, I feel really confident I feel like I've done the, the right the right thing to, moving down here after three nights with nothing uh, you know apart from the first few fish just didn't seem right so you know it's a learning curve this lake I've only ever fished it once before, you know, just for a couple of nights when I was a, a 20 something, so a long time ago. So, uh, you know, this, this session, it's really been a, a big learning curve and, uh, you know, I look forward to coming back here again. So, yeah, um, weather's lovely, you know, lovely sunset somewhere behind us, I suspect. We're gonna get a nice view of the sun coming up in the morning. Hopefully I'm up to experience it and uh, I'd be surprised if we haven't had a few fish by the morning. So, obviously, because Claire's with me, you know, I'm using more than my allocated four rods, got two carp to peshes. Um, as I've probably said before, why not? It's not easy waters, you know, and in a lot of these places I could use 20 rods. So it's all about fast tracking, uh, you know, a, a session like this and to getting results. So I've got four rods, out on the far margin out there which is a, it's quite a stretch it's, it's probably a good 300 and 300 plus yards out there uh, and I've got two rot on the peninsula of the, the snags straight out um, on the two right hand rods and then these two just off just off the peninsula where it drops down from 8 to 12 feet on a nice scattering of bait there that's that's quite heavily baited that one and then uh, the three rods there, I've got one in my own bay here which looks really nice, it's got sort of five, six foot right underneath an oak tree and then I've got another one down the end of the bay just before it gets really reedy and, and weedy there and then uh, another one just short of that that raft out there, just one in the middle of nowhere, just, just got to try it. So yeah, you know, we're, we've got all the options covered using tiger nuts on three rods because you know it seems like it's a good bet here really and you know it's caught uh, it's, it's took it's, uh, it took one of my fish um lost the fish on tiger nut i think one on boilie um 
and then the others are on like double 20 mils, uh, snow, 24 mil snowmen, single 24, that sort of thing, in either uh, my uh, bird food bait or, or my ever faithful mussel, which hasn't produced this session yet. But there we go, we live in eight, I'm sure it will. So yeah, so uh, I think I'll leave it there for now. Uh, enjoy the rest of the evening and uh, go and have another cup of tea and wait poison ready for these alarms to scream into action. Videoing? Yeah. Oh, look at that beastie. Yeah. Tell you what, hold them up, on the, up against the light a little bit. Might make a difference. Is that any good? Yeah. Oh, that's good. We were talking yeah. about that. There you go. Look at that. Well, I don't know what sort of beetle that is, but that's a beauty. He's got a hell of a set of pincers on him. But one of the beautiful yeah. things we've seen. Absolute beauty. Yeah, we've seen a few quite pretty things. <laughs> that's a beaut. I'm going to put him somewhere safe. Yeah. <laughs> I would. Very safe. Right, here we go. I didn't have to wait too long then after our move. Bait's only been out in the water a couple of hours. And this one's roared off on the far margin on Tigernut yet again. Within about five yards of the far margins with all the sticks and that are. It was always the one that was gonna, gonna go. Absolute beauty. Fought like a demon. Thought it could have been a lot bigger. But it was just a, an ounce or so over £20. So, lovely. So, the move has already paid off. Good so, start. A great start indeed. Yeah, show you <laughs> the other side. Nice pretty fish. A nice fish in here. Got some nice scales on them. They're a little bit different than the usual scaleless. There we go. Lovely fish, beautiful clean mouth on him, big mouth. Lovely. Yeah. Well done, babe. Half in the night, plus a, a near three pound rud as well, which didn't count that as a take. Uh, one carp was, uh, as you know, was just over 20 pound. The other one I just unhooked in the water was a very low double, and then lost one last night. The hook pull, saw this morning followed by a snag fish as well on this very same rod that's only been out for a little while. And there we go, another one on the tiger nut. One o'clock in, in the afternoon. While we were here just catching ropes on the float rod. Lovely. Another pretty double, very pretty fish in here. All lovely scaly fish. Another upper double. I'll just done them in the water here and let him straight go. There we go. Probably about 16 pounds. 
if he's lucky. Probably 15. Same time as last night, I should think, isn't it? About half ten. Yep. And our first common of the trip, probably about 12, 13 pound. Not going to weigh it. Very pretty fish. Look at that, scale perfect. Mouth perfect as well. Lovely. You picking me up all right? Yeah. <clears throat> Very proud. Look at him, bristling. Yeah. All well, good fun at 350 yards, hitting whole tactics. Uh, about uh, seven, eight yards of the uh, snags on the far margin, so seat the pants stuff. They might not be very big, but they're certainly uh, putting me to the test. So all good fun. So yeah, there we go. First one of the of the evening, not of the day, because we have had a couple today. So uh, yeah, I think that's number four since we've here. So we're we're what are we now four three to me. Yeah. Yeah. So here we go, right, pop this little babby back. Fresh steam. Look at him, he's dorsal fan. <laughs> right, you? Sunday morning. Not quite sure what time it is. But Rob and I were trying to track down a green lizard that was scampering about in the bushes here and bang the alarm rips off Rob tried playing it from the bank but this one he, um, he is fighting hard start again go go okay. There we go, so about 10.30 on Sunday morning and uh, had a good night's sleep. Had another one in the night about one o'clock amid double mirror. Uh, haven't put any rods back out and just left the rods fishing that are out. Far margin again, this one's 22 pound four ounces. So the biggest from Paraloop yet. And a proper wildy common, beautiful. Absolutely cracking fish. Proper Wild River car for me. Lovely. Thank you very much. That is a beauty. Right. Let's let it go. Okay, I, I think I lost count, I don't know, but I think this is the fifth or sixth take of the night and the fourth or fifth carp of the night. Um, £21.4 ounces, it seems like the 20 club have moved in. We've had three others of, uh, of £20, pound, £20 plus recently, 
which we sacked up because it's nearly morning which we'll show you uh, in a few hours it's about five o'clock now this one was snagged went out in the boat and as soon as we got above it it just pinged off everything's on tiger nuts now <laughs> the old goo's working it's magic as well <laughs> i'm sure it's helping and uh, we're getting through tigers and parkles at a very quick rate of knots and uh, yeah so uh, yeah brilliant so we've got some real pretty ones to show you in the morning as well so i'm going to pop this one back now Wow, what a busy night it's been. As the sun rises, it's now Monday morning, about 6 p.m. and uh, we're in for a bit of a, a bake. Sorry? A.M. Yeah, A.M. 6, 6 a.m. Um, I think we're in for a bit of a baker today. We, winds turn around to the east. We're going to have about 27 degrees today, something like that. Light winds. Um, and it's been a crazy, crazy night. Got lots of fish to show you in a little while. Um, not really been to sleep tonight. We'll do that this afternoon. <laughs> and uh, to stay up and admire this beautiful sunrise rolling off the water. night I think had about eight or nine takes uh, with a succession of fish around this size around 21 pound so here we go Claire's fish you know Claire lucky was awake uh, and she got straight on the rod to pick up the rod on this one while I was dealing with another one it all kicked off for about half an hour we had about five takes so We'd, we'd have lost it, you know, Claire got a rod, this would have, you know, this, this is Claire's fish, but I'm holding it for uh, best of, from power leaf so far, as far as I'm concerned, the best of the trip as well, 24 and a half, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, you know, all proper hip and old tactics from a far bank. It's a real proper hardcore fish, even though they're not the biggest fish in the world, but they still test you like they are, so, yeah. Oh I was knackered after pulling in that one. You <laughs> was a bit, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. a beauty. So, well done Claire for landing that. You know, all I've done was stuck the bait out. Claire done the rest, really. So, well done Claire. Great, great fish. So, yeah. And he's behaving as well. Yeah, he is. <laughs> <laughs> so, good stuff. So, we'll put this one back. One of the other 20s from last night. I think we had five, well, we have, I've had five 20s in succession. And uh, and this is the last one, and we've had a linear. Look at that! What a beauty! Incidentally, I don't think I said before the common was 24 and a half. I did actually. This is about tw this was. I think this is 20, 22. Yeah. Something like that. 21 and three quarters or 22, low 20. Uh, so now we've had a common, a full leather, a mirror, and a linear full linear the only thing we're missing is a fully scaled so I think you call that a linear through the other side there you go what a beautiful fish they're all really pretty fish in here I don't think I've ever been to a lake lake like it so yeah uh, there we go we'll pop this one back 
Ja. Get much better than that, really. Proper pretty fish. Oh, off. Wee, off he goes. Nothing wrong with him. pounds. Beautiful. Bit of an old warrior this one, missing its pectoral fin. Thank you very much. That's the one that has been caught the There we go, off you go. Monday afternoon. And uh, as you just saw, it's probably about three o'clock. Just put that 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 19 pound old warrior, and uh, Claire's been befriended by an old gentleman next door to us, and uh, he's going to take her out on his yacht. And I just hope that he goes far enough out and don't snag me. So, uh, yeah, lovely gentleman. Obviously, he doesn't speak a word of uh, English, and Claire, well, doesn't really speak very little French as well. <laughs> so, anyway, she's kindly accepted, and uh, she's going to be taken for a tour of Lac de Paraloupe. That ain't a bad way to, uh, to see it, I must say. Just cast off, and there she is, sat on the back. Takes the monotony of listening to my alarms all the time. And uh, yeah, I'm sure she'll have a great time. Maybe get winding dog, a bottle of champagne, nice meal in Paraloup or Salas Caron. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Maybe we might run away with her. <gasps> It's a cracking afternoon today. We've got a beautiful sort of north, north easterly wind blowing down the lake a little bit. It's eased off a bit now, but it was a lovely rolling wave coming down here earlier on, and obviously you had that carp, and it was always going to happen, really. But it's about 27 degrees today, and it's idyllic. We're right down at the bottom of this arm. We're out the way of all the bass anglers and all the bloody jet skis and everything else. And the only thing is we've got is just this lovely gentleman down here. Comes out on his yacht every day. Like he goes to do his shopping. There he goes. Oh my word. 
Have you told him you haven't got a license? <laughs> Au revoir, bon voyage. <laughs> All right. So, good afternoon. It's uh, Monday afternoon, sometime I don't know, around 4:30. And uh, as I've said before, it's been a really hectic three nights fishing here. So we've done the three nights uh, on the first swim and uh, we managed to winkle out a few in the small bay to my left um, but it soon dwindled. I think we spooked the fish out with what was there and um, what was just left with a, with bream and tench. Um, the big pre-baited area <coughs> that I baited just off the island at about 150 yards range just didn't produce. It just didn't seem right. I think I, I would have thought that I would have heard something. So, as you know, uh, we've made it down here and this last three nights have been pretty manic. It's the busiest carp fishing I've had for a few years. And, uh, you know, lots of smaller fish. It's, it's great fun. Um, you know, fishing about 300 25, 350 yards, I suppose, to that far margin over there. Um, I've got uh, four rods over there, and then I've got uh, two rods over in my own margins across the other side of the bay. It's quite, quite sort of close. Um, it, it's, it's spectacular fishing, is the only way I can describe it. Um, the bait runners on, on the Daiwa um, Infinity is it just aren't strong enough to all these runs we're fishing with 30 pound braid all the way through to a 60 pound uh, Ultima um, mono shock leader and the, the bait runner's done up as tight as it can and, 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 the, and the carp are just ripping off like steam trains you know they are turbo boosted it, it is nothing else uh, I can explain it so we're not using the bait runner now and just using the clutch and the clutch is so tight it's it's basically it's tighter than what I would have it for biting clutch it's just giving them no nothing at all you, you have to fish within about 10 yards of the snags otherwise you're a little bit in the middle of nowhere really so you know 10 yards is okay if you're fishing tightened up and you just have to lift into these fish and hold the rod hard and high and just hold on and you watch these fish explode at 350 yards now on the other side you can't miss it you know it's a big eruption of white water as the carp can only power up to the top he can't go away from you and he just he has no choice but to come up it, it's it's the most spectacular heart in your mouth fishing you could ever experience and, and these fish aren't massive fish but the water at the temperature at the minute, the surface temperature is probably, probably about sort of a, about a 21 degrees uh, on the surface but I think it's a bit cold and that down below and it's not really got hot yet. These fish are, are, are getting at their peak after spawning now which I think they've probably been spawned a, a month and they're really long and lean and you know just uh, absolutely you know power packed um, yeah it's, it's really great fun it's a little bit cloudy down here but you know in the shallower spots you can you, you know you can watch your drop your bait down and you can place a couple of handfuls right on top of your bait and uh, have a couple of handfuls of freebies right on your bait and and then just sprinkle a little bit around just to get the confidence just to draw them into the pile of bait and where your up bait is and uh, yeah it's good just uh, fishing purely with tight tiger nut up baits um, just uh, four tiger nuts with uh, either a piece of white plastic corn seems to be the best or, or yellow it, is, it seems okay now 
um, and I've also um, started using trimmed down 15mm cc more boilers in between the two large tiger nuts and that just makes it a little bit lighter cc more boilers are packed full of attraction but I'm also gooing them up as well uh, I'm a bit of a fan of the goo it, it does it does turn sessions into something special at times I know it does and just uh, you know the, the boiler in the middle of the hook bait absorbs the goo even better I goo them up and I let it dry on the uh, tigers and the boilie you know uh, before I, I want to take it out if at all possible and uh, that just draws the fish in even quicker and uh, and it's working it really is working it's certainly not the fish I don't think are shying away from it it's minute in time I'm not quite sure how many fish I've had since we got to Paraloop obviously we had the three at Maori um, we had the three on the previous lake um, and I think now we must be probably getting on for 20 takes and um, with a few landed if not a few more you know probably 15 15 odd fish in three nights um, it's crazy fishing you're not quite sure when you're going to get a take it looks great the wind's really got up nice and strong it's about 20 kilometers an hour today and it's coming down all the way down this long arm which is probably i don't know probably a mile and a half long until it gets to the main bowl this lake's 3300 acres it's an immense lake and we're just fishing the tip, the end bay of one of the three arms that drop down from north to south and uh, it's where the fish want to be this time of year, the, the, the lake's at near on max level I would say, um, you have to get boat your gear to the swim on 90% of the 99% uh, of the venues, the places you you could bivvy up at the back of your van are also slipways and they have pl obviously places where every other local knows where they are, not just anglers but you know people just wanting a picnic as well and bring their jet skis down and that sort of thing and just chill. So to get away from it all we've got to fish these nice little wild venues, we bring a bow saws with us and uh, you know poss possibly sometimes have to create sort of swims uh, at this high water level and trim a few swims out swims out a little bit and you know make a nice tidy job of it um, you know and it, and it looks really nice and, and, and it's, it, it's done in the best possible way as not to harm the trees but just prune them if you like and sometimes have to take out the old pussy willow um, which you know is not really a, a, a it's a sort of tree in abundance and they almost grow like weeds but at the end of it we leave a nice clean open swim and it also gives somewhere else for other anglers to fish. Quarter past ten on a Monday evening still, still on a Monday. Monday's been a long, a long day. And uh, this one went off at about ten o'clock, a little bit earlier than normal. And uh, just an ounce and an ounce or so under twenty pounds, about nineteen. 14 I suppose if I had accurate enough scales pretty fish pretty mirror put up a bloody good good scrap again look at that pretty fish very pretty fish indeed put up a great account of itself to do the other side there we go Lovely, look at that bloody great big dorsal things they got on these fish Really weird, pretty fish, eh? Real scaly, look at that. Look at that, beautiful. Where's my bait? Oh, there it is. What's the date today then? Is it Tuesday or Wednesday? Tuesday. Tuesday, the 26th of June, and it's 8.43. Well, you heard that. <laughs> so, we're going to. But we've had a bit of a quiet 24 hours really. You saw that 19 pound uh, mirror last night, that was so under 20 pounds. Uh, about uh, 10 o'clock last night and I thought, here we go, we're going to be in for another busy noppy. Well, we ended up having a very good night's sleep and that proved to be the only take. That's the only take we've had. We've not even had a take. Normally get one in the morning as well, one or two, sort of up to about sort of one or two o'clock in the afternoon. For nothing, it has been. You really did quiet. have a take. 
you did have a take at seven o'clock this morning. A nice big slimy bream. Ah, the bream. Yeah, I did have a bream. That's right. <laughs> That's why I've got a rod in all day. Yeah, so apart from a nice big slimy bream, nothing else. Um, I've been out and about today. It's been a balmy day out there. I think the uh, forecast said it's 29 degrees and it certainly felt like it and very little wind at all. Wind's picked up a little bit now and it looks rather nice again. Uh, I don't know if you can see, I don't know if that is a full moon coming up or if it's got another night to go. Looks pretty full to me. Um, but yeah, um, I've had a little scan around in the boat today in all the usual area, holding areas. Uh, where the carp are lying up and uh, two days ago um, the bays were holding well from what I could see 20 or 30 carp in each bay and I've gone around the two bays today and I found three carp so it says to me the carp have moved out of the area um, you know I think that's it unless any, any, any move down again tonight a fresh shoal then uh, maybe we'll get a few more fish but either way, we've had a great session here. I'm not quite sure how many fish we've had. I think it must be, it's certainly, yeah, it must be get, uh, yeah, high teens, maybe 20, nearly 20 fish, not including takes. Uh, and obviously um, dropped a few just by having the bully and hold them out of snags and, uh, and, one, and a couple did get snagged as well, um, where the clutch should probably been a little bit tighter. Uh, so there we go. So we're gonna give it tonight. The camp's packed down. We've packed down the uh, the bivvy. We're going to sleep under the stars tonight. Cleaned everything down a bit, packed it away. Uh, so we've got a nice quick getaway in the morning. And then we're going to head probably up to the Morvan National Park where there's a few lakes around that area. Um, so uh, I'll sign off for now. And unless I catch any of the car, then I'll see you tomorrow not far short of midnight on Tuesday night and uh, over 24 hours later oh, we've got this one just over 20 pounds 20 pound 4 ounces there or thereabouts an absolute powerhouse reels totally locked up all we can do is bend the rod over and pull the bobbin up and hit into it and literally just turn around and wanted to take line off me straight away and I couldn't give it any. The rod was hooped over, all 13, 13 foot, three and a half pound of, uh, of Gray's torsion. Pretty much almost straight drizzling it. Look at the tail on that one. What an amazing scrap. All the way in it, it fought every inch. You, I'd, if I'd have lost it, I'd have said it was uh, a lot, lot bigger. But immaculate in the mouth again, different scales on this one again, Got nice royal scales along its dorsal fin, lovely, brilliant, if we end our session with this one it'll be, it'll be brilliant, fantastic, <laughs> so we'll put it back now, thank you very much. We've got so much power. Boom. Oh. Right, so that really is it. It's now Wednesday morning. And uh, as you can see, slept under the stars last night. That uh, mirror was just over £20 again, very oddly proved to be the only bite of the evening. Exactly the same as the night before, can't believe it. All these rods out, all exactly the same setup. Um, all on areas that have all produced fish over the weekend. And just that one random carp around the same size as the one the night before. So, be packed up and away within the hour. Um, pretty done most, most of it yesterday and then off on our little trip up north. So on that note, I'll say bye for now and catch you later. Bye bye.
So just a quick update, update rather. It's uh, Wednesday evening, um, about uh, quarter to ten in the evening, and it's been a bit of a long day. Uh, left uh, last lake around um, I don't know quarter past nine this morning, and uh, down in Everon region of France, and uh, we've had a, a nice steady run um, up the A75 and the A71 and a bit of cross country to the Morvan National Park where there's quite a few lakes in the region and uh, we're fishing one of them now. Finally got all the rods out, uh, Biv is up, um, Claire's a little bit under the weather, come down with a bit of a nasty head cold, bless her. Um, but uh, yeah, we're here uh, for our last three nights. Um, it's amazing, it's been a boiling day, um, I don't know, probably been the best thing to do, travel through the day. Oh, there we go. Looks like uh, possibly Bream has found spots already. <laughs> so uh, Bream rolling everywhere, um, absolutely going crazy. Fishing with tiger nuts and uh, double boilies, 24 mil snowman. I've got a feeling we might be snagging a few Bream tonight if anything out. Um, so yeah, like I say, it's been, Paul got interrupted then, it's been close to 30 degrees today, I think towards the end of the weekend it's getting to 35, 36, or even 37 degrees, so absolutely balmy, but you know, we'll be gone from here early Saturday morning, any, well sometime Saturday morning, uh, with another six hour drive back to Calais, um, so yeah, um, got everything covered, water levels were really down here, very, very surprised. Um, can't quite believe it. Obviously, a lot of people, a lot of farmers, and I think we're using irrigation in the area. Um, wouldn't be really used for much else this lake. And uh, you know, the hot weather now, getting the plants to go. So, anyway, before we travel on anymore, going to leave it at that and uh, hopefully have an update um, by tomorrow morning. Get many shots and that then? Yeah, well, you can have a look at them. I don't know, I just took a few. So this is more entertaining at the minute, that's all. Pretty up there, isn't it? few shots all the way sort of along so you could see mm. what it was like. Yeah. Yeah, wow. Huh? <coughs> it's rocky, isn't it? Yeah, it's rocky all mm. the way. That's why I took that picture. When it gets steeper and steeper, mm. I actually went looks over like the that. Looks like the other bank looks a bit tamer. Yes, it yeah. is. It's, it's more like that. Yeah. But uh, Yeah, and that's how it gets. Look at that. That's nice. How far up's that? Uh, about halfway up. Yeah, that's nice, isn't it? Over there. And the pitch up under that tree, you know. Out of the way. Yeah, I went up in the trees to take that Yeah. Thanks, Dad, for letting me drive your tractor. I waited so long. I can't believe you're trusting me with it. Oh, we've got a spectator. Oh, oh no, with the pressure. I hope I don't butter it up now. Oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. I can't believe it. You're asking to put that, that what light on in a minute. Can I turn the wally light on, please? <laughs> no, you can't. Just focus. Very important job. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, just a little update uh, from the last 24 hours uh, since we've moved to this lake in the Morvan uh, area of France. Uh, not really a lot to tell. Did get the baits out last night. Possibly a little bit rushed and as a result I was doing them two at a time, as I do, and I must have uh, snagged one on the way back in and dragged it off into the middle of nowhere, but that, that's by all there really, because, you know, middle of nowhere is only sort of like about 27, 30 foot, 
um, you know, and I've got plenty of rods. Um, so yeah, no, nothing to report. One bream about one o'clock this morning. Masses of bream um, just on dusk, about half ten. Um, but nothing, nothing to show. Um, a good night's sleep, really, after the bream. Um, just enjoyed the day. Done a little bit of swimming, and uh, just. Uh, watch the the day go by and uh, people's coming and going on the lake which was a little bit comical to say the least um yeah and just enjoying the, the sunset and uh, as you can see doing a little bit of cooking there behind us steak ball sauteed potatoes beans uh, and a nice cold beer and maybe a rum and coke for dessert Followed by a bit of yop. So yeah. And me. And maybe Claire as well, if I'm if I'm good. So yeah, there we go. Lovely lovely sunset. Again, well we don't say lovely sunset, don't see too much of it. But hopefully we'll see a few beautiful colours. There's a young couple camped just over yonder there, look. All bear grills got their tarp over a bit of rope between two trees. Having a nice romantic evening together. Hope we don't keep them up. <laughs> Might end up. <laughs> I hope they don't keep us up. Ah, that's it. You never know. It's looking heavier than it looks. Proper little unit. I could name it Wayne. <laughs> Quarter to two in the morning. Oh, lovely. <laughs> and here he is, fat little fella. Look at a little breeze block. There we go. 20 pounds, 8 ounces. First cut from the Morven National Park for quite a few years, making it three carp from three different venues on this trip alone. I'll uh, settle for that. Nice clean fish. Uh, he's really been feeding up. He has. He's got some been munching. Let's turn him around. Don't think there's much to uh, a few more scales this side. There we go. Lovely. So can't grumble at that. Let's hope, uh, hope for one about twice as big as that, and then uh, we'll really be finishing on a high. It's uh, probably about 10 o'clock on Friday evening. I don't know what date it is today. 29th is it? Yeah, so Friday the 29th of June. And it's been a long, hot day today. Wind's turned round to the east, so it's coming off our back. Uh, it's been a wind, but uh, we've not really felt it. So uh, um, we've... Uh, by the time the sun come around late afternoon and it was sort of setting in front of us now as you can probably see um, the last few hours were pretty hot um, no more carp since that one last night about quarter to two in the morning um, but uh, we have seen two jump today seeing carp jump on these lakes seems to be a bit of a rarity and Claire saw one, well I saw the circles and Claire actually saw the fish jump out of the water only about 20, 30 yard out, just where that little patch of ripple is there now in about 10 to 15 feet of water. So we've got three rods along that ranging from 10 foot to 15 foot, nice little line of bait. Not very much boily because I haven't really got much, just been pre-rehydrated. So I just use what I've got, but certainly enough for a bite. And, uh, and a bit of particle um, and then the other four rods I've got them all in that far bay over there where I took the, the, the mirror from last night uh, again with just enough for a bite just enough to pull them down if there's any fish there we should get at least one or two takes tonight so like I say we saw the carp jump today and I've just seen another one could only have been a carp jump in the middle of the lake here out in front of me so there's certainly carp in the area, so fingers crossed we'll get one or two tonight 
to finish what's been uh, another very uh, fun, successful session. And we're going to just kick back, enjoy our last evening in France, and, uh, and take it all in and reflect on what's been great fun. Right, good morning. Saturday the 30th of June, and it's about, I don't know, quarter past nine at the minute. And um, that's it. Nothing in the night, just uh, we had a, a very vicious drop back on one of the rods, um, didn't dr dump the lead date, um, so whether it was a carp that got away with it or bream I don't know, so that was it, uh, didn't hear anything else in, at night. Um, so yeah, that's that's it for another uh, French, well, French carping adventure for me and Claire. Say hi Claire. <laughs> and um, yeah. We were, as you can see, the bivvy's net empty, just waiting to be uh, taken down and the rods are wound in and bagged and then we, uh, we've got six hours back to Calais, so yeah, um, that's it, until next time, see ya. <laughs>